most trainers are exercising in cyclopedia. So one thing that every fitness trainer with YouTube is great at is new and fun exercises, and I think that's fantastic. I love that I can deliver these videos through YouTube, and along with a lot of my colleagues can do it as well. But there's a downside to that. The downside is, well then, I don't know what the heck to do. If I got an hour with this client and their goals are A, what are the best uh, exercise options in order to maximize this client's time? So we have a disconnect nowadays with, with the exercise and why you're doing the exercise. So one of the things we need to get good at is we need to have a principle-based filter that we can analyze exercises from, hence this series, I'm gonna start analyzing exercises. Now, when I say analyzing exercises, I'm not talking about, you know, looking at the sheer force at the knee during this exercise or uh, the biomechanical type stuff, things like that. Other people are, are great at that and they can do a much better job of that than I can, than I can. So I'll leave that to them. What I mean by analyzing exercises is look and say, is What's the, the best purpose? What might be the best use of this exercise? And if it's really good here, then that means it's not necessarily good here. All right, and, or maybe different uh, for different goals is what I'm getting at. So one of the exercises I want to look at is one of the things I see commonly done with trainers is this step up and bicep curl. Now, if you're not someone who uses it, okay, this, this video, this exercise doesn't apply to you, but I still think you'll appreciate it. Anyway, so no, I'm not saying that this exercise, step up to bicep curl, is a bad exercise at all. You can't necessarily say bad or good. We just have to think bad for what, good for what. So let's think about things. Remember I said that principle-based filter? Principles are not my opinion, they're not your opinion. Whether we like them or not, they're there. So principle of overload. So we say, okay, well, why are we lifting weights? We're lifting weights so we can get strong, right? Okay. And we can't get better in a movement. Oh, well, I want to build functional strength. Okay, well, we still need to get stronger, so we still need overload, right? All right, so that's a principle. We can't get around non-negotiable. We need overload to create enough stimulus to improve strength. So now, if I'm using a weight that's appropriate for me to get, let's say, 12 reps per leg, for bicep curls, so I can get essentially 12 curls, is that weight anywhere near enough weight to create enough overload at the 12 rep mark, 10 or 12 rep mark, to create the proper stimulus on the leg, which I'm certainly trying to strengthen because I'm involving in the movement? Absolutely not, right? Because I can squat hundreds of pounds. There's no way I can curl hundreds of pounds. So. 20 or 25 pounds for 10 reps on my biceps may be really struggling at 10 or 12 reps, but that's a warm up for the leg muscles. So we think, all right, so where might this exercise, so what this exercise might not be that great for is strengthening the legs. Now you would say, okay, well, I'm trying to strengthen a, a total body movement pattern. You mean like functional? Well, function means carrier. What, carryover we're getting at to do a curl and a step up. I don't really see that happening too much in, in life. You hold things and you step up, but that's an isometric hold in the front, and that's using your legs. Would maybe a search or squat where you're holding a barbell in front of you be better for that? Absolutely. We're looking at functional transfer. So where might this then fit into a program if we know it's not necessarily good as a strengthening exercise, because really what it is, it's an awkward biceps curl with a little bit of leg work in there. Certainly not enough to really give the legs what they need. And because you're constantly worrying about getting up the steps, you're not even really allowed, you're not even able to focus as much on the bicep curl as you, as you want to. So we're really not getting a lot of anything. So if you say, well, what about, because it's total body, what about it's getting more muscles, therefore more muscles per, uh, work, more calories burned, Maybe this would be good as like a circuit type exercise to put as a part of a circuit. After I've done my muscle-based work, where I start to integrate things together, where I'm just trying to elevate the metabolic cost, I would say, okay, now I'm starting to pick up what you're putting down. I still might argue that 
we might want to involve a few more muscles than just the bicep curls, but I like where you're going. So really what I'm getting at here is taking our opinions out of it, taking the desire for just doing new fun stuff all the time out of it, looking at principles and looking at what the goal is. Every exercise has an application. Where might it best fit? The exercise, like a step up to a bicep curl, if you, if we're looking at principles, would best fit as like a warm up. Or actually, I would, I take that back to so take the arms as a part of a circuit at the end of a workout. If you're trying to just maximize total body type movements, many things at a time, and you've already done your strength training, you've done your squats, you've done your pulls, and things like that. But when we start blending things together like this, one group loses out. In this case, it would be the leg. So really, this is just a fun bicep curl variation. It's not really much for the legs. That's why I would put it at the end of the workout. So we need to start thinking in principles like that. In some future videos, we'll look at some other exercises and analyze them on a principle-based filter, not just on a fun-based, new-based, sexy-based, um, flavor of the month-based filter.